Welcome to part six of Garage Talk, in which I discuss some commonly used measurement tools used for motorcycle maintenance. This video is going to focus on equipment used for dimensional measurements, for example, length, depth, diameter, and thickness, commonly used for motorcycle maintenance. So here I've got some examples of uh, probably the most basic uh, length measurement equipment. So I've got a couple of uh, steel rules. Uh, these are both stainless steel. Uh, the, this one's 15 centimeters, this one's 30. And you can see the 15 centimeter one has an adjustable stop, uh, which is handy if you want to me measure out uh, uh, markings on something. So right now it's set to 15 millimeters and it makes it very easy to uh, put this up against the end of whatever you're measuring and then mark the length. Um, the steel rule uh, is very handy for sending things like sag and measuring longer things. This one goes up to 5.5 meters. Obviously on a motorcycle uh, you probably don't need more than about 2 meters for any of the measurements you're doing. Uh, one tip is to avoid plastic uh, rules. So these are both stainless steel. Um, I've had these years and years and uh, they're pretty much as good as uh, new. If you buy a plastic one, uh, typically the quality is uh, much poorer and uh, you'll find a crack and break and uh, probably not that accurate in the first place. So I recommend getting some stainless steel ones. They're not expensive, so definitely worth getting. And next up is calipers. So if you want to measure something more accurately than using a rule, uh, the caliper is a really good tool. Uh, very easy to use. Um, it has multiple functions, uh, which I'll explain. So the top one is a uh, vernier caliper, and uh, it has a scale on here, allowing you to read uh, down to 0.1 of a millimeter. And uh, the different uh, things you can use it for, so you can use it to measure internal bore using these uh, jaws, and you can measure the length or uh, the diameter of something like a bolt, uh, using these jaws. And the jaws have a flat here and also a uh, sharp edge. Uh, so depending on what you're measuring, uh, you can use different parts of the jaws. And at the end, uh, there's a depth gauge as well. So this is really handy. Um, you need to make sure that uh, you get this upright in the uh, bore or whatever you're measuring for an accurate measurement. Um, but very handy device to have. Uh, below uh, two uh, digital uh, calipers. These are both made by uh, Mitsutoyo and uh, very easy to use, uh, nice display. Uh, these actually both have a solar panel uh, which will run off uh, indoor lighting. And I've had these for probably five years or so and uh, still working great, no battery to change. I uh, really like these. Um, the only difference between these two is the uh, length. So this one measures up to 150 millimeters and this one up to 100 millimeters. And I use the 150 millimeter one most. Um, it's pretty much a standard size for calipers. And it has the same features as the vernier caliper, so two types of jaws and depth gauge. Uh, I should note there is one difference between the depth gauge feature. So the 100 millimeter one has a round uh, piece for depth gauge measurement, which is handy if you're measuring uh, small bores. And uh, the 150 millimeter one has a different shape one. Uh, so when you purchase one, decide what type you want. Um, these are available in uh, various uh, shapes and forms. So uh, they're not cheap. Uh, they're not that expensive either. So I think it's definitely worth getting a decent quality one. As I mentioned, I've used these for about five years, still work perfectly. Uh, if you buy a cheap one, maybe that won't be the case. So I think it's worth investing some money um, when you purchase these so you can enjoy them for a long time. And as you can probably see from the display on the digital calipers, uh, they read down to a hundredth of a millimetre. Um, so it's one decimal place better uh, than the vernier caliper. Although you can read between markings, um, it's just a little trickier to do. So this is very uh, clear and easy to read. Um, I like using the uh, digital calipers. They're much more expensive than uh, vernier caliper. So I typically use the vernier caliper for um, kind of rough measurements and um, where things are dirty. For example, measuring chain slack, I always use the uh, vernier caliper. 
But for measuring more accurately, um, my choice is the digital caliper always. Some tips when using calipers. Um, so before you take a measurement, uh, you should check that the jaws are clean. Um, if they're very dirty, you might need to use some uh, parts cleaner carefully uh, to remove all and any grit. Um, if they look fairly clean, a good way to clean them uh, even further is just to take a piece of ordinary paper, close the jaws on the paper, and then pull it out. And that will remove any uh, grease or um, small debris. And you can repeat that multiple times. And then uh, you can check your zero. So as you can see right now, it's measuring uh, 0.00. .00. So uh, I'm all ready to start my measurement now. Um, when you start your measurement, if you're measuring the diameter of something like this, uh, it's important that you align the jaws correctly across uh, the piece you're measuring. So uh, the height of both jaws should be the same. Um, and then you have to apply uh, some pressure to the jaws. So these digital uh, calipers have a thumb wheel which allows you to apply pressure to the jaws. And uh, this is something you build with experience and uh, use. And it's important that you apply the same amount of pressure for each measurement you take. Uh, if you apply more or less, uh, the measurement may change. And the same applies to the vernier calipers. Um, these don't have a thumb wheel, but uh, you apply pressure using the slide here, and it's important the amount of pressure is the same for each measurement. And as I mentioned, to measure depth, you can use this portion of the caliper. For example, if I want to measure the depth of this bore, um, I just simply push down on the caliper, and I can read off the depth. Um, it's sometimes quite difficult to align the calipers correctly in the bore, and it is important that uh, you get good alignment for an accurate measurement. So really a better tool for a depth measurement is a depth gauge such as this. Uh, this one's made by Mitz Toil, and as you can see it has very wide uh, jaws here to rest on uh, whatever you're measuring. And the depth gauge uh, actually has two scales. So uh, the one at the top is for this edge, so it measures from this edge uh, to the jaws here. And the other one is for the hook portion, uh, so the inner portion from here to here. So the way you use it uh, is just the same as the caliper, uh, you insert it, but because of the wide jaws it makes it very easy to align on your workpiece and uh, ensure an accurate measurement. And using the internal uh, hook portion uh, you can measure, uh, for example, in a cylinder on a two-stroke engine uh, you can easily measure the power valve uh, setting. Uh, so a really handy tool to have, uh, more accurate than a caliper for depth measurement. Uh, not particularly uh, cheap though, I'm sure you can find cheap ones, uh, but I recommend getting quality tools uh, so you only need to buy one uh, once in your lifetime. I've had this uh, quite a while, um, it's in very con condition, I don't use it so often, but uh, when I do use it, uh, it's very handy to have. To measure thickness and external diameter, it is possible to use the caliper, this part of the jaws, uh, to perform a measurement. But the level of accuracy is limited by um, your experience in using the tools, as I explained before. Uh, you need to apply the same amount of pressure for each measurement to ensure repeatability. And also uh, the display, uh, so on these digital ones it's limited to a hundredth of a millimeter. If you want to perform a more accurate uh, measurement, uh, the micrometer is a very good tool. So I have two here. Uh, the smaller one uh, reads from 0 to 25 millimeters, and the larger one from 50 to 75. Um, other than that, uh, the features are, are very similar. You can get vernier um, versions as well, and they're cheaper, but um, it takes a little more time to read the display. Uh, the level of accuracy you can achieve uh, can be similar with either type. Uh, one really cool feature of uh, these ones is they have a clutch mechanism built in um, and you can probably hear that clicking now. That stops you over tightening um, the jaws when performing your measurement. Um, so it allows a, a high level of repeatability. Uh, it's super important that you keep the jaws clean and uh, clean them off before performing a measurement. I use the smaller uh, micrometer for uh, measuring things like four-stroke uh, shim thickness and uh, the larger one uh, for calibrating my bore gauge. And for calibrating the larger one, because the jaws won't fully close, 
It comes with a standard. Uh, this has the end caps um, on it, protective end caps, and it's 50 millimeters plus minus uh, zero microns. So you put this in here, uh, close the jaws, and uh, measure uh, it off, and then you can zero it out. Um, so very easy to calibrate and use. When performing accurate measurements, um, I highly recommend using a stand like this. Um, two big advantages. One, it holds the micrometer steady and allows you to position uh, the measurement piece easily. Um, another is that the micrometer is sensitive to temperature changes. So holding it uh, like this, there's no uh, change in temperature as long as the surrounding temperature is the same. If you're holding it in your hand, your hand uh, can warm up uh, this portion of the micrometer and actually change the measurement. So it's a very sensitive measurement tool, uh, very good idea to, to use a, uh, a stand like that. For measuring the distance between parts, um, you can use uh, calipers, so this part of the jaws, uh, to do measurements. Uh, but for really small gaps, um, it's very difficult to do an accurate measurement. And certainly things like uh, valve clearance, uh, you need to use uh, a set of feeler gauges like this. Uh, this set is ma made by RSK, and uh, I really like them uh, because the smaller or thinner ones uh, go in steps of 0 0.01 millimeter. Um, so it starts at uh, 0 0.03 millimeters and goes up in 0 0.01. So 0 0.03, 4, 5, 6, um, up to 0.15 and then up to 0.5 in 0 0.05 millimeter steps and then uh, from 0.5 to 1 millimeter in 0.1 millimeter steps. So a really nice set to have. Um, I know other uh, manufacturers have similar sets. Uh, definitely get yourself something like that, especially if you have uh, a four stroke and need to do valve clearance measures. If you want to measure an internal bore, uh, you can use calipers using this portion of the calipers and uh, achieve a reasonable level of accuracy, um, particularly if you w just want to do a, a quick and uh, dirty measurement, uh, I think that's fine. But it does have some limitations, as I mentioned before. If you want to perform a more accurate measurement, it's much better to use a telescoping gauge such as this. So this set uh, covers a range of eight millimeters right up to the biggest one, uh, goes up to 150 millimeters. And uh, the way it works is um, when it's unlocked, uh, these can move in and out. So you insert the tool into the uh, bore and uh, you position it, um, so you align it so that uh, it's reading uh, the bore accurately. And there is some experience required to align it and get the, the right feel. Once you have it positioned correctly, uh, you can lock it off using this uh, screw and then these won't move anymore. And then once you've done that, you remove the tool and measure across here with a micrometer. And you can um, achieve a high level of accuracy using a tool like this if you have some experience and uh, take care. Uh, you obviously also need to clean these thoroughly before doing your measurement. Um, but really a more accurate and easier way of doing bore measurements is to use a bore gauge. So this one is made by Mitsutoyo and it has a nice dial gauge on it which reads down to uh, one micron. So one division is one micron. And I have a whole video which uh, covers the use of this and um, I, I show some actual cylinder measurements. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one if you're interested in seeing that. And to perform run out or lateral deflection measurements, it's handy to have a dial gauge like this. Uh, this particular one's made by Mitsutoyo and the resolution is 0 0.01 millimeters, so 10 microns per division. And it has a, a relatively long stroke of uh, 10 millimeters, so handy for performing various measurements. And it's on a magnetic base made by Noga. And, uh, this is a steel bench, so I can lock it by moving the switch like that, and it's very secure. Uh, so you could mount it onto the frame and uh, perform a measurement, for example, uh, Conrod uh, lateral deflection, uh, various measurements, a really handy tool to have. And here I have a couple of uh, straight edges. So one is 200 millimeters, the other one is 500 millimeters and uh, they're very accurately ground and uh, very handy for measuring things like uh, whether your cylinder head is warped or not. So you simply uh, place the straight edge across the 
top of your cylinder head and uh, then you can visually inspect it. You can also use feeler gauges on it if it is warped and determine whether it's in spec or not. Also provides a good uh, reference uh, level uh, to make other measurements from. Sometimes it's uh, not easy to do it directly and having uh, a straight edge like this uh, makes it a lot easier. So handy things to have and uh, definitely worth getting some good ones which have been ground nicely. And to measure bolt and screw thread pitch uh, it's really handy to have a uh, thread pitch gauge. So this is a metric one and goes from 0.5 uh, right the way up to 1.75. Uh, it can be used on external threads and also internal threads and nuts as well. So a really handy thing to have and uh, very reasonably priced. And to finish up with, you can see my 450mm mids toil caliper uh, compared to my 150. Um, for motorcycle uh, maintenance jobs, uh, you don't really need a caliper this large. But it is handy for uh, engineering work and uh, just thought it'd be fun uh, to show that you can get uh, large size of calipers as well. So when purchasing measurement equipment, I do recommend that you buy a high quality brand and purchase the best you can afford. Um, a lot of my equipment is made by Mits Toyo, which is a, a Japanese brand. But I know uh, there are other brands which are also high quality. Uh, so do some research and uh, hopefully uh, you know, purchase good equipment uh, which lasts your lifetime. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the other videos in the Garage Talk series 1 through 5. Um, I haven't made one for quite a while, so uh, you might not have seen the earlier editions, so uh, definitely check those out.